a lot of you. I don't think I've ever seen this room so full, and I have no idea how many people are joining us, joining us live on Zoom as well. Um, but yes, welcome. I don't think I've ever, I know for a fact, I've never baptized that many babies in one shot. But did you all notice that not a single one of them cried? A lot of times when the babies get cold water poured on their heads, they're like fidgeting and they start to cry, but not a single one of them cried. Oh, thank you, God. Because <laughs> that would be like, ah, but yes. And we're very, very thankful for uh, Chong Yin and Alicia's family making it here safely. Praise the Lord with that. Well, the holiday season is definitely upon us, if you had not noticed. Um, but more and more, as you know, Halloween, Thanksgiving, and Christmas is all mashed together. Have you guys noticed that? It's not three distinct holidays anymore. If you go to the grocery store, you will see leftover Halloween candy in the clearance aisle. You will see all the fixings for a Thanksgiving turkey dinner in another aisle, all the while listening to Christmas music that is playing over the speaker. Is that not true? Right? So all three holidays, a person can be, you know, get very confused about that. But today we want to, for sure, celebrate pause and take time to give thanks. It is Thanksgiving Sunday, and we want to give thanks to our God. The title and text of today's message is, Thanks Be to God. And we will be looking at Psalm 100, very short psalm, don't freak out, it's only five um, very short verses, but thanks be to God. This is normally what we say, um, tradition in liturgy and worship services, when we read scripture and we say, this is the word of the Lord, and all God's people say, thanks be to God. And so I want us to get into that habit of always being, having that thankful heart. Now, throughout the um, U.S. history, starting from George Washington, even um, through Abraham Lincoln, and also to present day, even to this day, there have always been proclamations and celebrations concerning a thanksgiving of sorts. Proclamations and celebrations of Thanksgiving. But all the early celebrations had one thing in common. One, the, one thing in common of the proclamations. And that was that their Thanksgiving was directed toward God. It wasn't just, oh, I'm thankful. Oh, thank heavens. No, but it was always directed towards God. You will notice that. George Washington's Thanksgiving proclamation was given in 1789, October 3rd, 1789. And if you can see up there, it says, whereas it is the, I can't hardly see it, it is the duty of all nations to acknowledge the providence of Almighty God, to obey his will, to be grateful for his benefits, and humbly to implore his protection and favor. This is just an excerpt from that proclamation. Also, Abraham Lincoln. I do therefore invite my fellow citizens in every part of the United States and also those who are at sea and those who are sojourning in foreign lands to set apart and observe the last Thursday of November next as a day of thanksgiving and praise to our beneficent Father who dwelleth in the heavens. And this was October 3rd, 1860 an excerpt from Abraham Lincoln's famous proclamation. Thanksgiving Day is unique in that it does not commemorate a war. It is not in celebration of someone's birthday. It's unlike MLK or President's Day or uh, Veterans Day or th things like that. It doesn't do any of that. It doesn't commemorate birthdays or anniversaries or anything. It's simply a day that is set aside to express our nation's thanks. To God. Think about that for a moment. It is a, simply a, one particular day that has been set aside to express our nation's thanks to God. And remember that these proclamations, right, and these celebrations came at a time when they were struggling, despite the fact that they were in the hardships, experiencing the hardships of war. It was either during war or immediately right after war was happening. So these were not fun, great, joyous, prosperous times that these proclamations of thanksgiving came. The people were acknowledging that God was their creator and God was their provider. And that all good things ultimately come from God. Every good and perfect gift 
comes from above, the Father of lights. So thanksgiving is part of our human response to God. It correctly reflects our position, our proper position before God, our maker. It not only acknowledges who God is, but it also reminds us of who we are because we are found, our identity is found in him because he is our maker. So today we choose to give thanks, even in the midst of what's going on in the world, the bad things that we hear on the news, right? We hear always bad news about people being killed, about uh, racism, about uh, war, climate um, issues and problems. We hear all these bad news, and despite that, we choose to give thanks in the midst of sickness. We are in the season of this RSV, used to really be only for premature babies, and it was not as prevalent, but we're in the midst of RSV, COVID, and the flu. So all three, they're calling it a triple whammy, not even a double whammy. We choose to give thanks in the midst of inflation and economic instability. 401ks and the stock market and just gas prices, food prices, all this stuff that's happening around us. Choosing to give thanks to God is a conscious choice that we all have to make every day. We must be intentional about it because thankfulness is an attitude. I'm sure you guys have all heard the phrase, attitude of gratitude, right? Attitude of gratitude. Very easy to remember. Now, this familiar phrase, uh, verse in 1 Thessalonians 5.18, we are most of us are very familiar, have even memorized this verse. To give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Notice that it says in, it's capitalized and um, in a different color. Notice it says in all circumstances. We're not to give thanks for all circumstances, but it is in all circumstances. So you're not going to give thanks for losing your job and being laid off. You're not going to give thanks for being diagnosed with that illness. But it is in the midst of these things. And despite these things, we can still find ways to give thanks. We can still find a way to have a thankful and grateful heart. The message, uh, written by Eugene Peterson, is a paraphrase of the Bible, as you guys know, the MSG version. It paraphrases this particular verse this way. It just simply says, thank God no matter what happened. Pretty easy to remember, right? 1 Thessalonians 5, 18. Thank God no matter what happened. Modern paraphrase of it. It's about perspective, people. It's about perspective. Take a, late, take a look at this list that someone wrote. I think I might have shared it before. Look at this list. Interesting, isn't it? Look at the perspective it shows. I am thankful for the taxes I pay because it means I'm employed. I am thankful for my pants that fit a little too snug because it means I have more than enough to eat. I am thankful for a lawn to mow and gutters to clean because it means that I have a home. I am thankful for my huge heating bill. How many of us can say that? Because it means I am warm. I am thankful for even the piles of laundry. We just saw all these uh, families with their newborns and firstborn. You can imagine the laundry, right, produced by these babies and when they have blowouts and such. But even that I am thankful for because it means I have loved ones nearby. It means that I have a baby with me. It's easy to find the negative in anything, but we can turn things around by changing our perspective, as I said. You know, Isaac Newton said that for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. Oftentimes, we play the cause and effect game with God. We say, if this, then that, right? God, if you do this for me, then I will do this for you right? We play that game a lot. Um, for example, maybe, God, if you save me from this jam I'm in, this situation, then I'll go to church every Sunday. If you allow me to get a raise and promotion, then I promise to read through the Bible or, you know, these, these deals that we tend to make. 
So today I want to look really quickly at Psalm 100. As I said, five verses, Psalm 100, where we can see this cause and effect. We see the psalmist here proclaiming, Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs and know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name, for the Lord is good, and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. So we see the, the psalmist here proclaiming that God made us, so therefore we are his. We are his people. As I said, our identity is found in who we are, not found in who we are, but in whose we are. God said in Jeremiah, to Jeremiah in chapter 1, verse 5, God says, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. This is what the Lord said to Jeremiah. And today when we baptize these babies, we're reminded of this once again, that God formed them in the mother's womb and knew them too, even before they were born. So looking at the psalm again, because God made us, we're to shout for joy. We're to worship him with gladness. Um, we're to give thanksgiving and praise. We're to continue to give thanks to him and to praise his name because why? The Lord is good. Now, today, because it is Thanksgiving, I could stand up here and give you a 40-minute sermon. Uh, I could do that easily. But what I really wanted to do is I wanted us to be able to collectively, as we heard the testimonies of these new parents um, with their babies, giving thanks to God for the gift of life, for being parents. And, you know, you, we hear about how they chose, how they came to pick that particular name for their baby, right? And, and names have meaning. And we hear this. So today, as an act of worship, and thanksgiving to our God, I've asked a few people to testify about God's goodness. So today is a day of testimonies. We heard the testimonies of the parents um, about their babies, and we will also hear several testimonies of God's goodness over their lives, to share a testimony of their thankfulness unto God, to testify about how God has been good to them. And I would like us to all do something. All right, it's going to be participation. After each testimony, instead of clapping or instead of even saying amen, amen, what I would like to ask is that after each testimony is given, if every one of us, if we could just shout out, thanks be to God. So after we hear a testimony, we say all together collectively, thanks be to God. It's like, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This is the testimony of God's goodness. Thanks be to God. Let's practice. All right? So after testimony is given, we will say, thanks be to God. Thank you. And so that we know, and we are very clear, that all glory and honor, praise and thanks goes rightfully to our God. Let's pray. God, you are indeed here with us. Your presence changes the whole room, God. Your love and your sacrifice changes us. Father, we thank you for this day, this extended time of a longer than usual Sunday worship service where we give thanks unto you, where we cry out as your body and as a community, thanks be to God. You are our creator. You are our savior. Thank you for all the many testimonies, how you are living and active in the lives of your people, God. How you see them, how you champion them, how you rescue them, God. Father, we thank you for the many visitors here today. All the family members, God, who are here to witness your goodness. 
as we hear testimony after testimony of how you are active in our lives, God. Thankful for all the babies that were baptized and for Megan. Father, as we declare that as a covenant community, that we will partner together to raise these children in faith, God, to teach them who you are. We thank you for the Thanksgiving luncheon prepared, Father, by Jaron and um, the group who have devoted and dedicated, Lord, to serve, to prepare, to cook, and to make food. As we share it together, fellowship and good food, Lord, your gift to us. May we enjoy it to the fullest. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the amazing love of God, our creator, the fellowship and communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of us, especially the newly baptized and all the visitors today. Be with all of you now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. If you all could help us um, put the tables out a little bit and, and organize the chairs, that would be great. Please stay and enjoy Thanksgiving lunch.